What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and this is the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. Now these phones were just announced today at Samsung's Unpacked event and I was actually able to go to that event and get some hands on time with them myself. But if you guys wanna see a giveaway of each of these phones, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you know when that video is happening. But now let's jump into these phones and see what's new compared to the last generation. First thing you'll notice is that Samsung is trying to kill all the bezels and I love it. Unlike with previous Galaxy Edge phones where I personally feel like Samsung took away too much off the sides, these have the right amount and I think it looks better and it feels a lot more comfortable to use. They're actually calling this their Infinity Display and I think it has a nice ring to it. I just really love that these flagship phones like the S8 and the LG G6 are trying to kill the bezels this year. But what's awesome though is that you're still going to get access to some of those Edge features we saw on the previous phones while still having this new body. Now they really did shrink down the bezels on the top and bottom of the phone, which kind of led to them getting rid of the physical home button. But the bottom of the screen is actually now a pressure sensitive home button. So it kind of feels like there's a button there, but there's not. That also means that the fingerprint scanner got moved to the back. Now I'm not too thrilled about this because it's right next to the camera, which could lead to fingerprints on your lens which could potentially mess up some photos or at least add an extra step of you having to clean off your lens before you take the shot. But this is undeniably a beautiful phone and I like the direction Samsung is going here. They're even offering quite a few colors like coral blue, maple gold, midnight black, orchard gray, and arctic silver. So if you're looking for variety, they've got it, but I'm going black though. Now what's crazy is that the smaller S8 has a 5.8 inch display and the S8 Plus is 6.2 inches. That's a lot of screen on a small body. I compared the S8 to an iPhone 7 Plus and even though the 7 Plus is bigger, the S8 had way more screen real estate to offer. And when looking at both models of the iPhone 7 and the Galaxy S8, it's clear that the S8 Plus is much bigger, but what's nice is that it still manages to be narrower than the iPhone 7 Plus. And not only are those displays big, but they're packing HDR, so you're gonna be able to enjoy some great content, some great colors and contrast, and it's, it's a Galaxy phone. Samsung kills it with their displays, so there's no surprise here. And when I was messing around with the phone, I was pleased with the UI. It seems super clean and snappy, but of course, this is one of those things that time will tell if it's actually legit. So far, I like what I see, and I'm really glad Samsung is taking a step back when it comes to those skins. Now you have your typical power button on the right, volume buttons on the left, but under that, you'll also find the Bixby button. When you press this button, it'll launch Bixby, Samsung's new smart AI. It'll pull up on its own pane, which looks very similar to Google Now, where it has a ton of personalized daily information. And with time, it'll learn your habits and provide information based on your frequent activities. Honestly, I think it's safe to call this Samsung's version of Google Now. A cool feature that I did like though, is that you can use your camera to scan objects and Bixby will pull up information on it once it detects it. Overall, Bixby looks cool. Uh, honestly, it's nothing really too new here, but if you're looking for options outside of Google Now, Hey, at least you got it. I will say though, I hope we can map that button to another feature or application in case we don't want to use Bixby. Now, speaking of cameras, the front facing camera was upgraded to an eight megapixel shooter with autofocus. So that is awesome for people who want to take selfies. It can detect your face, get you a good shot in, but I didn't hear about any real significant changes to the rear camera. But hey, if it performs like last year's model, I am not going to complain. That camera's a beast. Now, something new to the Galaxy line is Samsung DeX. By simply placing the S8 into the additional flex dock, you can turn it into a desktop PC. Now, this is of course running Android, but it still feels and looks like a traditional desktop. And based on the presentation and what I saw in person, it looks like you're still gonna be able to do things like web browse, answer emails, and even work on some presentations with no problem, just the way we're used to. But what's cool is that even in this mode, you're still able to access those Android applications. The dock comes with two USB ports, an ethernet port, HDMI port, and a USB-C port, but that's used for charging. There's also two different versions of this dock. The standard goes for $149.99, and the quick charge version goes for 10 bucks more. But seriously, for $10 more, I think the quick charge version is a no-brainer. 
Now, I actually find this really impressive, not because it's the first time we've seen a feature like this. There's, there's been phones that had this feature before, but what I like is that it's on a main flagship phone that a lot of people will get their hands on. Even if you have to go out and buy the dock, people will now have that option to use their phone as their primary computer if they choose to, which I think is actually really cool. And there's other cool features like the eye and face scanner so you can unlock your phone or access important apps that a lot of other phone manufacturers aren't using right now. So it gives the Samsung Galaxy S8 a bit of an edge when it comes to security, pun intended. These are the main things that stood out to me after checking out the S8 and S8 Plus. But I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty excited to spend some time with this phone. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, pre-orders actually happen March 30th, tomorrow. So if you wanna get yours, make sure you get that pre-order in. And it officially drops on the 21st. So definitely be on the lookout for that. But that about wraps it up for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be the cool guy or girl that gives it a thumbs up. And make sure you're subscribed so you know when I'm gonna do that giveaway. But I'll catch you guys in the next one. Till then, it's your average consumer. Peace.